I was hit by a car as a pedestrian. It was a fairly serious accident. If this had happened to me in the Victorian era, I would have been that, uh, you know, that 45 year old woman that they wheeled around in a cart. I've got a, a daughter and a wife and me being uh, not able to, to walk or to get around, to be on crutches, not to carry coffee in the morning, not to, you know, you, you your, your entire world changes when you are injured. I didn't realize like how uh, complex my injury was. I mean, I was so nervous about how bad the injury was. I had had ACL surgery prior uh, in 2016 uh, up in Portland, Oregon. The hamstring that they had replaced didn't hold and it blew. Pretty much replaced almost everything in there but the but the LCL. I tore most of the ligaments in my right knee and um, ruptured my MCL and my ACL on my left knee and I also detached my hamstring on my right side. As a patient you're coming in as kind of a please help me. I started seeing orthopedic surgeons here in New Mexico um, after my accident and uh, could not find a surgeon who could do the surgery. My sister had had uh, surgery with Dr. Laprod and couldn't talk high, more highly of, of him. All the people that I reached out to, they started coming back to me with responses that um, basically led to one doctor, <laughs> which was Dr. Laprod. Pretty much everybody in my family is either a doctor or a nurse. If I learned anything from them, it was how important it is to um, find the best surgeon that you can and go there. It really got me thinking about what makes someone not just do their jobs, but advance the field in which they work. Not everybody has the motivation to continue to further themselves. It's funny, like reviewing for boards, we call it um, laprotograms, as far as studying the anatomy for the, the way the boards are gonna ask you questions, just because he's, he's published so well on the anatomy of the knee. I remember first meeting him and I was kind of starstruck, like, like this is the guy. There's no one else like him. He impacts so many people daily. He's very linear as far as his work, how he approaches his work. He gives a constant effort and everything he does. As you get to know him and work with him, you, you definitely get more of a sense of his character. From family time to his professionalism. He's a, a big hockey guy. He loves to be outdoors. He, he likes to go on a lot of hikes. He'll talk about the trees or the environment or something. It's something very specific or particular that I feel like most people wouldn't pay attention to. He really loves his family. He's a big time family man. He really loves his kids. He's willing to do anything for his family, willing to do anything for his wife. He's obsessed with his dog, Bentley. He is very focused, um, very intense, uh, and he's a, a man of few words. He always is looking for the next people that he wants to mentor, and he's always trying to help people further their careers. He's always asking, you know, like, what can I do to help out? You know, what do you need? He takes people under wing with him. The team is awesome. You know, they're all so fit and young and sparkly. It all starts with Amanda. Amanda's the one in charge. Even Dr. LaProud will say Amanda's his boss. Being at his caliber of expertise, he could probably let that go to a, more to his head and um, be a little bit more um, pompous, and he's not. Nick, our athletic trainer. If I went somewhere else, I would not have the opportunities or the ability to do what I do. The PAs that, between Fred and Chris, they make sure to facilitate our education. To help find solutions uh, creates a very um, good environment. Fred, uh, my counterpart, the other PA, uh, has been incredibly um, invaluable to me. He's a really good teacher. He uh, not only shows me around the clinic and keeps me uh, going the right direction on the clinic, but he knows the mountain really well too, so he does the same thing on the mountain for me. We're a little spoiled, especially me and Mitchell, because we're these young guys who are still trying to go to medical school and we get to see the best of the best. It's sometimes a little strenuous, but um, I mean, it's, it's fun to be a part of it. It's cool to see. It's pretty profound how much I've learned in a very short time from Dr. LaProd. Talking about life, talking about how to be a good surgeon, good person, father, husband, all those things. Having somebody who's patient and, and willing to, to 
pause clinic for a second and talk you through something uh, to help make sure that you understand what's going on so that the next time you know, a patient like that walks through the door, you know what's going on. Dr. LaParad has given me a career. He wrote my medical school letter of recommendation, which is you know, huge. From undergraduate students, helps them to get into medical school, medical students to residency, residents to fellowship. He's uh, really redefined where and how we think about surgery, how we reconstruct ligaments, and how we, as a result, how we treat and evaluate patients. His outcomes have shown that reconstructing the PCL has, can give great outcomes, where in the past they're very mediocre at best. Most recently we've had quite a few patients for meniscal transplants. MCL injuries, ACL injuries, PCL injuries, um, he's won multiple awards, um, everything about the knee. Offering surgeries may be the normal, um, you know, run-of-the-mill surgeons wouldn't be able to do. And do you have any funny stories about Dr. Lopez? Um, Can you think of like a funny story or something, like an example of him being comical? <laughs> funny stories? Um, funny story. Um, what can I say to not get in trouble? I'll come back to that one. Hold on, let's skip that and come back. I stabbed Dr. LaParad. We were doing a very large meniscus repair, and that involves holding uh, this sort of gun with a cannula. And if you don't get it perfectly, the needle comes out the side of the gun. I put it in and I stabbed him, and he jumped, and everyone went quiet, and he had to scrub out, scrub back in. Needless to say, I was very nervous after that, and uh, I stabbed him again. He certainly does like to tell me I'm slowing him down in the operating room, and it's hard to argue with him. Dr. Prod treats his dog like it is a child. He asked me, like, how many bundles are in the ACL, and I had no idea what it was. He didn't even introduce himself to me, and I was like, oh, man, I'm in for a long day. He has a very unique and interesting way of working out. He just gets on the bike and he puts the resistance up literally as high as it can go. It is so slow watching him go around on the bike. Probably the funniest story, uh, Dr. LaProd took her team uh, out for dinner and it got brought up. There was a patient who got LaProd tattooed on, on her body. She was a young girl and had gotten permission from her mother to have Dr. LaProd's name tattooed on her ankle. And um, his wife had never heard of that before. And so when it got brought up, Dr. LaProd made a side comment to his wife, see, you're not the only one with LaProd tattooed on your body. But the coolest part about it was the actual tattoo had his name and it had um, bamboo and a, and a frog that indicated that it was a great success and it meant a lot to her that she could get back to what she really wanted to do as a young girl and an athlete. You always wonder why people are as good as surgeons as they are, as good as athletes as they are. When he has a very complex knee issue and a patient with a complex problem and he can't figure it out, he, he said, like, it bothers me, I'll stay up at night. He does have a Vail International um, Complex Knee Symposium that he hosts annually and that's very telling this, to have all of the international surgeons travel here because what he's doing every single day that I always felt was normal um, these international surgeons are just learning. I'd like to say that he's the best knee surgeon there is in the world. I remember I'd be nine o'clock at night and I'll be, I'll be so tired doing work or something like that and he'll be sending edits after, you know, six surgeries in one day and um, then he'd be waking up at five o'clock working out. I don't think he gets worn out. He doesn't get exhausted because he loves what he does every day. He takes a genuine interest in, in how you're doing and if you're able to get back to the things that you want to do. It's impressive just how many lives he's been able to keep doing what they do um, with, his, with his research, with his surgery. Realizing that there's a complex issue and then coming up with a solution that, that betters someone else's life. He truly just cares about people. It's about helping people. That's something he truly enjoys about being in medicine, is giving back. That's how I relate with him, and that's where I find my driving force in working with him. He has a lot of patience, and. A lot of charisma and he, he's just a great surgeon and a great human being. The thing about him is he loves what he does, so every day the guy has a smile on his face and he enjoys to do what he does. This is what he enjoys doing. I can assure you he's, he, he wants to help. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better experience. You know, if I could be half as good as him one day, it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. Just the level that he's at, it's just like you're comparing 
Tiger Woods to like an amateur PGA golfer is that they can play the course well and they can they can do a good job. But the reality is they're not like a major champion year after year after year, which is exactly what Dr. LaPrade is. And I just remember saying to one of the patients next to me, someone who had just had surgery and I, and I was a few months, probably a few months out. And they said, gosh, there's so many people around here, so many famous people. I said, there are so many famous people here, but the, the, the true rock star is Dr. LaPrade. And a couple of the, um, a couple of the PTs turned around and they were like, oh, you, you've got that right.